Good mental health to you. I'm psychologist Dr. Ali Matu, and I'm going to explain why it's so hard to get good mental health care and what we can do about that. A friend of mine asked me for help finding a therapist. Let's call him Bob. Bob has anxiety. He's been anxious for a long time. He's never been in treatment before, but his anxiety got a lot worse after his son was born. Now he wants professional help. Bob knows I'm a New York City anxiety expert and that I know a bunch of other New York City anxiety experts. Bob thought it would be easy for me to connect him with a good therapist. Bob was wrong. Everyone I know was either full, didn't take his insurance, or wasn't available at a time that worked for Bob. It's been a few weeks now and I'm still trying to find a therapist for Bob. I'm going to confess something to you. This happens all the time. Not only do I have a hard time finding therapists for my friends, but as a therapist myself, I'm always turning people away. The problem is how traditional psychotherapy works. A patient and therapist work one-on-one -on -one for an hour a week. For simple problems, therapy might last a few weeks. For complex problems, treatment can last months or even years. This means for me to do my job well, I can only see a small group of people. That's also the only way I can keep myself from burning out. I went back into my records and counted up all the different people I worked with in 2017. Do you want to guess how many people that might be? 67. 67 people. More people are going to watch this video in the first hour of its release than I will have seen in a year as a therapist. I love being a therapist, but I hate the limitations of my job. I got into clinical psychology because I wanted to help a lot of people, not a select few who knew how to navigate the system, could afford to pay out of pocket, and escape school and work at random hours of the day. I hate turning people like Bob away. It makes me feel like crap because I know they're probably going to get lost trying to navigate the mess of the mental health care system. You might be thinking, okay, so we just need more therapists. More therapists aren't gonna solve this problem. We've got about 700,000 mental health care professionals in the United States, but the number of people who have a diagnosable mental health disorder in the United States is 75 million. We will never have the supply of professionals that we need to meet the demand for mental health services. So let's just pretend for a moment that we magically get millions and millions of more therapists, which would be the reverse ending of Avengers Infinity War? Anyways, uh, there's still going to be an access problem. Most therapists are clustered in big cities near universities, so small towns and rural areas get neglected. And unlike a physician that you only see a few times a year, psychotherapy is designed for weekly treatment. That's just not practical for a lot of people. And many therapists don't take insurance. And if they do take insurance, that might limit how long you can work with that person. And with CBT, DBT, ACT, psychodynamic, psychoanalytic, and so many more treatments available, it's really confusing and overwhelming to know what type of therapist and treatment is the right fit for you. So what's the solution? Reboot the entire system. At least that's the premise of my all-time favorite psychotherapy academic research article, Rebooting Psychotherapy, by Alan Kasdan and Stacey Blaise, and I'm now realizing how nerdy that sounds, and also how nerdy all my writing on this is, which you can't see because of the lights. Anyways, the psychologists in this article discuss all the ways we have to get beyond this idea that psychotherapy is a one-to-one -one thing. They talk about using apps to scale up treatments to reach entire populations, more self-help resources that people can use whenever and wherever they want, and using media to create entertaining educational mental health content. This article came out in 2011, which is way before YouTube is the thing it is now, but reading through it, it's so obvious to me that YouTube can do so much amazing stuff for mental health. I mean, you can get immediate answers to symptoms that you're experiencing right now. You can get help navigating the mental health system and support from a community that celebrates mental health. But YouTube, for the most part, doesn't do that. Besides Katie Morton, there aren't many mental health professionals creating mental health content. So that means when you search for information on anxiety, 
Maybe you'll get a video you trust, like one of Katie's, or maybe you'll get something that's super sketchy and gives you harmful advice. This is why I've decided to reboot The Psych Show. For almost four years, I've made videos about a variety of topics in psychology, but from here on out, I'm going to focus on mental health. I think this is where I can make the biggest difference on YouTube. I, I think this is what I was meant to do. I want to share everything I know about dealing with your emotions, coping with your thoughts, and facing your fears. I want to tell you my mental health journey and help you understand what it's really like to be a therapist. I want to reveal every secret I know about navigating the mental health system. I want you to have access to resources that will help you thrive. I want us to build a community that will lift each other up and celebrate mental health together. So let's get started. What topic do you want me to tackle next? A beginner's guide to mental health? How to find a therapist? What to do if your friend needs help? Let me know in the comments below. And now for no reason at all, I will thank my patrons to the tune of Mario Brothers. Special thanks go out to Elizabeth and Tyler and Anna and Arndt and Colin and Evan and Imran. I want to thank also Sam and Ryan and Sophie and Emmett and Israel. Neurotransmissions, you're awesome. And so is Eric and Eve and everyone else. And if you want to become a Patreon, go to patreon.com slash the psych show.